Hello, welcome back to my daily Tour Divide coverage. We are now on day eight, so without further ado, let's get across two track leaders and have a little look and see what's been going on. And um, as you can see, um, there's a bit of a separation now between the front of the race and a bit of a regrouping further back. So you may remember yesterday I talked about the fact that there was um, some, some, some weather forecast for the basin. Um, the Great Basin being the high altitude desert area in between Colorado and, and the mountains of Wyoming. And it looks like we, well, <laughs> the forecast was correct. So the the first three riders, Justinus and Ulrich, seem to have got away with it. Um, Lawrence Temdam, he stopped for an extended time in Wam Sutter last night. Uh, but he seems to have managed to get through and he is now, um, looks like Brush Mountain Lodge, um, having a bit of a rest and a recoup. Um, and our two leaders, Justinus and Ulrich, that, that gap has stayed fairly consistent, um, although it looks like Ulrich is off course and stopping for the night. Um, there's not many places to stay around here, so it looks like he's gone off route. It's about a mile or two to the town of Kremling. Um, so it looks like he's potentially staying down there somewhere. Um, so yeah, Ulrich is very much, um, his, his race tactics have very much been to sleep inside every single night, not really camp out at all obviously traveling super light whereas Justinus is a bit more kind of happy-go-lucky with it he's, he's just going to ride and see where he ends up um, I imagine he's probably aiming to get to Silverthorn um, but local time at the moment it's nearly 1 a.m so he's, he's pushing it pushing it again um, this section there's a series of three passes um, it's what are they the Utes, Gore and uh, Lynx Pass I can't remember which order they're in I'll show you on Ryber GPS shortly um, but we're in Colorado now, so you can see on the elevation at the bottom here, it's it's getting pretty high. And um, yeah, you probably want to be sleeping it inside if at all possible. Um, further down, this is this is where the main action seems to be happening at the moment. The front of the race is pretty stable. Um, but um, Megan Hakkinen, um, she is now, she, well, she's in fourth position overall. Really amazing ride. Um, Thomas Fabian, it looks like he basically, uh, we'll go on to the social media uh, in a while, he got stuck in the mud. So there was a massive storm front that came through the basin and when it rains in the basin, it, the, 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 the tracks just turn to mud. Um, we'll put the radar on at the moment um, and you can see, well you can't see anything at the moment because it's not working very well. Um, basically there's there are some weather fronts coming through and um, so it's going to be touch and go over the next couple of days I think as to to which riders are going to get get through you know, freely and which riders are going to get caught out um, looks like they might be okay um, but yeah certainly they they've had to shelter in Atlantic City I think Megan stopped for four hours Thomas carried on and ended up camping by the side of the road um, and then everyone else kind of caught up with them um, so yeah a bit of a regrouping there and um, we'll see we'll see what happens through the rest of the basin it could be a tough day if if the conditions continue to to be uh, bad but uh, Megan is still if despite the four-hour stop is still ahead of Leo, Leo Wilcox's record pace um, which is really cool to see um, and Anna Jager she's still in second position and she is currently in Pinedale I think um, Oh no, near Atlantic City. So yeah, she's she's just sort of heading into the basin proper. So she's closed the gap a little bit. Um, but Megan has had that rest, and we know she rides really strong. So we shall see how that develops. And uh, on the single speed side of things, because I know there's a lot of people out there like the single speeders. Um, basically, they they're all regrouping again. So the, the three musketeers, they're all um, they are all in Pinedale. Um, it looks like they're staying at hotels overnight. Zach is, uh, well, he's not quite in town yet, but he was he was up behind the other two. Um, so they're going to start tomorrow pretty much all together. It'll be a case of who can get out of bed earliest in the morning, I think. And um, yeah, see how they get on across the, the basin. So um, before I go any further, uh, as usual, I just need to say a big thank you to Redshift for supporting my coverage. They've got their new bars, these top shift, uh, top shelf handlebars. Um, they're kind of like a riser bar um, for your gravel bike, which is kind of cool. It gives you a higher hand position if you um, if you struggle with with getting the bars in the right place. And also, it, because it's, because the um, the stems clamping on this lower section, it gives you loads more room for to put stuff on there, like light brackets, GPSs, things like that. So they're pretty cool. Looking forward to getting those on my bike. I think they look pretty good as well. Um, bit of a mountain bike kind of uh, vibe for your gravel bike. Um, so yeah, big shout out to Redshift. Um, check out their website and there's a discount in the description. Uh, and thanks again for all the support.
Um, so what I'm going to do now is let's have a look at Thomas actually first to just to put some kind of um, some visuals on on what's been going on in the basin. Um, you may remember last year there was there was so much mud and all the leaders got stuck. Um, doesn't seem as bad this year. Um, the, 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 they seem to be like short, sharp storms rather than prolonged rain. Um, so let's see um, what happened for for Thomas and if, if it loads up. Um, that's the problem with trying to record things live. We'll go back to that in a second. Um, so yeah, Thomas basically got stuck in the mud. Um, and w when that happens in the basin, there's just not much you can do. Um, so yeah, kind of unfortunate, but it's going to make the race more exciting. And it gives him a little bit of a rest, I guess. And let's have a look, see where the leaders are now. So I said that we, we had the three, um, I guess, passes having, heading over into towards Silverthorn. Um, so Ulrich is currently in Kremlin here. Um, and so you can see that once you once you go through the big town of Steamboat Springs, this is kind of your main resupply in Colorado, I guess. If you need a bike shop, if you want a hotel, all of that stuff, that is is the place. And it's it's one of the last big towns. Um, well, Colorado, you've got you've got Breckenridge and stuff, but Steamboats is is you've you've not seen much for a long time. So it's a pretty key place. Um, and then you've got these three passes here. So you can see they're not massive passes. Um, but they are kind of gradually, you know, you're getting the altitude higher and higher each time, kind of fast rolling. It's not too difficult, um, but you can get cut, caught out, you know, that's high altitude. If these storms come in, it can be pretty grim. And then the, they have the first sort of big, big one, Breas Pass out of Breckenridge. Um, that'll be tomorrow for these guys now at the front. Um, but yeah, they're, they're doing, they're doing great still. Um, and they're still ahead of Mike's record. Um, so that's pretty cool to see. Um, let's try, let's try, uh, Thomas again. Um, uh, his Instagram stopped working. So, so unfortunately, um, I won't be able to show you the mud. Um, got an update from Marie as well. She's been posted on Instagram. Um, we heard from her a couple of days back. So let's, let's hear what, uh, Marie's been saying. From, uh, Christmas landscape to, uh, in Montana. So that's the thing about Tour Divide, you know, a couple of days back it was barely above freezing, snow everywhere, and now essentially it's it's almost desert again. So um you've got the the high temperatures and you've got the low temperatures and sometimes you have them both in the same day, sometimes you have them both in the, the same hour. Um and that's one of the big tests. Um so Marie was having some problems. She's been sending me a few messages um and she's she's still been having problems with her SRAM Axis batteries. Essentially she says at night it doesn't work when it's too cold. Uh, but it works in the morning when it's warmer. So um, yeah, obviously some temperature sensitivity with those batteries. And um, I wonder if anyone else is having those problems. Um, it must be very frustrating. But uh, for, for me personally, I think I, I wouldn't go with a system like that for a race such as the Tour Divide because, um, well, there's nothing wrong with the cable. cable cables, <laughs> they, they work quite well. And if you've got a full length in a cable, um, you know, they'll, they'll shift smooth the entire ride and you don't have to charge anything and you haven't got any batteries to go flat. Um, but anyway, that's my opinion. <laughs> but, you know, having said that, the, the, the SRAM wireless is pretty cool. Um, right, uh, Eden TT, uh, sorry for mispronouncing your name. Um, I need to give him a shout out because a lot of people have, have said about him. He is 15 years old, 15 years old doing the Tour Divide. This was him, Red Rock Pass, the other day. And um, yeah, I don't know what's going on with uh, <laughs> with Instagram at the moment. But yeah, he's done a lot of snow riding. This, I think this is JP's fat one of fat, one of the fat pursuits events he's part of the uh be good foundation scholarship that um that jay runs and um yeah basically he's 15 year old 15 years old doing the tour divide that's pretty amazing um so uh yeah shout out to him and um keep it rolling i did have some more videos from jay but um i just instagram's just been a bit weird at the moment so um unfortunately this is not very smooth today <laughs> um but what i do have um i was, now we're a weekend i've been speaking to a few people um, basically for their opinion on, on the divide and, and how it's going. Um, so I've spoken to Mel Webb who runs the Detours podcast. Um, she's been keeping a close eye on the women's side of things and Sophie and Sahili, obviously a name you, you will probably know he's, he's won the Tour Divide in 2022. He's won the Silk Road mountain race three times, the Atlas mountain race, um, endless other races. And, um, he's going to give us a good take on the men's field. So let's have a little look, um, listen and see what Mel says. 
I'm going to give a quick update on a handful of the women in the race. There's not as many women as I would like to be racing, 21 out of 226. Uh, not the best ratio, but some really incredible people out there racing. Uh, not updates from everybody, but I'll start at the head of the race. Megan and she, Megan and Anna were on record pace for quite a good chunk of the first half. And uh, Megan's now found some separation from, from Anna. She's 50 miles ahead of her. But the big story today is that Megan stopped for four hours in the middle of the day at Atlantic City because of a massive storm. Uh, so if you've been following by now, you know that Atlantic City is at the beginning of the basin and the basin can just turn into horrific peanut butter mud. So Meg waited out the storm. There was also quite a bit of lightning. So electrical storms are can be risky to move forward in. Uh, waited out the storm and set out under better skies tonight uh, so it's about 11 30 p.m local time and she's doing a midnight run across the across the basin and looks to be making okay progress so maybe hasn't hit too much mud um and lael's record dot is now just a few a few miles behind her so um things have come back together a little bit uh, for the record pace but we'll see we'll see how things shake out as she heads into colorado after the rest of the basin uh, not much updates from Anna. Jay Peterbury was posting some videos of her and, you know, said she might have been sick and had some food poisoning and she's just such a trooper rolling with it, uh, which is super cool to see. And then moving back, no updates from her, but, uh, oh, sorry. Mary Sully Blaze is the next woman on the road and yeah, she's had a ton of adversity. She had f uh, frame issues recently, battery issues. She had some mechanical with her bike before the race even started and she wasn't sure if she was going to get it sorted. Uh, but yeah, so she's had a lot thrown at her, but she is, she's still smiling and this is her second year on the divide. So I'm sure that she will, if thing, if conditions allow, she'll be chasing for a a little bit of an improvement on her performance from last year. Uh, yeah, so behind Mary, we have Kirsten Cluley. She hasn't posted many updates, but uh, fun fact about Kirsten Cluley is she just finished the Highland Trail not that long ago, which is relatively big race, probably a great uh, preparation for the divide in terms of getting your technical skills and dealing with uh, adverse weather. So wetter at the at the highland trail maybe not as cold but uh no doubt she's used to pretty adverse conditions and then the next update i was able to find is courtney white and uh she's 25 from australia and she was pulling a classic divide move sleeping in a toilet in a state park um not glamorous not great but uh yeah it's sometimes you got to do what you got to do but yeah so there we go. Thanks for that, Mel. Um, just a little bit of an insight and uh, some more stories from the women's field. Um, and don't forget to check out uh, Detours um, Cycling. Um, that's the, the podcast um, that Mel runs um, with a big focus on, on the female side of the sport. Um, and now uh, I've got a little update. So I spoke to Sofian and I've just basically got his take on, on the race and, and how it's panning out and, and what he thinks might happen over the, the, the second half of, of the race. And we have a couple of minutes, so I'm going to focus on the men's race. But before that, I just want to say that I am absolutely amazed by what Megan Hakkinen is doing uh, in the women's race. I knew she was good. I knew she was actually very good. But I am now realizing that she's elite. And it's just, um, it's just a, a pleasure to watch how she's blazing through the course. Um, in the men's race, we knew that uh, Justin and Ulrich um, would be at the front, that they would be battling uh, for his first, first place. Um, I was also curious to see uh, what Liam Glenn um, would be able to do. Sadly, he had to drop out because of health issues. I was curious about Lawrence Tendam. Uh, he was right there with them uh, until he suffered a mechanical. He is now like 100 miles behind, so... It's gonna be it's gonna to be tough for him to come back, I think, because 100 miles is a lot, and Orish and Justin are very fast, and they're very experienced in the in in that kind of, in these kind of races, whereas Lawrence is not. So anything can happen, but I I doubt that he will be actually able to catch them. Um, 
Uh, I think that Rolvish is racing a, a very smart race. He's taking really good care of himself. So he's split, sleeping indoors every night. Uh, so he's probably, I mean, I'm I'm guessing that so far he hasn't uh, dug too, too deep. Um, Justin, on the other hand, I slept uh, indoors, I think, just a, a couple times, maybe two or three times. Um, he, he had a good stop in Elkhorn Hot Springs after uh, after pushing through uh, Fleece of Ridge. Uh, and I think that it was probably very good for him um, because, yeah, he, he, he seemed to have cut back on sleep many times. And at some point, that kind of stuff... Uh, it just it just uh, gets gets back to you. Um, so um, yeah, it seems that he he stopped at uh, Brush Mountain Lodge to uh, take like a big nap. Um, so he might now uh, be uh, better rested, and I think that it's going to be a, a big factor in, the, in this race. Like if he if he manages to be smart, take good care of himself, um, sleep indoors maybe a little bit more then he's i think he's just like a little bit faster than Ulrich. he probably was last year but then with all the mechanicals that he had he couldn't really get that victory but i suspect that he's the strongest rider of the two and that if everything goes well he's 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 gonna get it and he's also probably gonna gonna set a new record um it's very impressive what both Orish and uh, Justin are doing with very adverse adverse weather conditions, uh, being faster than, than Mike's record. Uh, yeah, they're very impressive. So that was Sofian Sahili. Obviously, if anyone knows how to win the Tour Divide, it's him. So um, yeah, really good insight. And uh, it's, it's good to have his take on, on things and how they're panning out. Um, so yeah, that's that's pretty much all I've got for today. I'm hoping tomorrow, um, I haven't had much in the way of updates from riders the last day or so. I think everyone's a bit stuck in the mud in the basin or they're pushing hard in Colorado. So hopefully I'll have some, some voice, voice notes um, from some of our, our leaders uh, tomorrow and um, I shall be back then and I look forward to seeing you all there. So don't forget to subscribe and I shall see you all soon.